part of the solution. You're part of the problem. Down the ages, the human race has succeeded in tearing its world apart, turning nation against nation, race against race, and one religion against another. But there is a faith who believes that world peace is not only possible, but inevitable. This faith is the world's oldest religion, the Baha'i faith. There are currently some Five and a half million Baha'is in all corners of the globe, working towards a lasting peace in which the earth is but one country and mankind its citizens. So don't blow it. Good planets are hard to find. the most widespread religion in the world after Christianity. But being a Baha'i isn't easy. The message of Bahula meant so much to Mona, a 16-year-old girl in Iran, that she was willing to die. Girl, living in a land so cruel, she said, this is where I've got to be. Taking in the night, her heart full of light, she said, this is where I've got to be. freedom is an absolute but the way that you get there is relative that every person gets there in their, in their own way and I think that religion is the same thing religion is an absolute but for every person and for every kind of person and for every race and color and culture there are different ways of approaching this whole idea and I think all of that is encapsulated in the Baha'i teachings and in the Baha'i faith the world really is at a point where we need we need to come together as a whole we need to um, overcome the differences between people and the difficulties between different cultures, different races, uh, different religions, because religion in so many cases bec has become a divisive force between people. And so for me, being a Baha'i is really wrapped up in that whole idea, the idea of oneness and uh, the idea of bringing the world together and saving the world, because at this point, what we're faced with is the destruction of the world, the destruction of our planet, and each of us in our own way has to, has to really contribute to that. For too long, mankind has worshipped the very things that tear mankind apart. But there is one religion who believes it's time to think again. That religion is the Baha'i faith. What are we aiming for? An end to extreme wealth and poverty. An end to all wars. 
respect for the resources of our planet and its atmosphere, an end to the misuse of drugs and drink, an end to the inequality between men and women. But if the Baha'is succeed in taking all these away, what have you got left? In a word, peace. And isn't that the one thing that's really worth having? The vision of the Baha'i Faith is ultimately the most great Peace. That's what we're working towards, that's what we're committed to, that's what we put into practice, starting with ourselves. So when is that going to happen? When is this world peace going to materialize? That depends on us. Were you brought up as a Baha'i? Or were you converted? Did you find yeah. it? Well, it's very important that each person as who is a Baha'i has found it for themselves. You don't just automatically become a Baha'i. But actually, I was brought up in a Baha'i family, uh -huh. and actually, I'm fourth generation Baha'i. Well, doesn't that make um, a difference when you're brought up as a Baha'i? Of person? course it makes a difference. Right. I mean, I have no idea what it would be like. So you've stuck with the religion, then, haven't you? You've lost... You've yes, I have. Yeah. Yes. Have you questioned your religion at all at any stage in your life? Question it all the time. I think if you stop questioning, you just become apathetic, and you just become blind. Surely, the God didn't... Uh, convert you into Baha'i, it was your family, you were conditioned into it. Well, I really don't think so. I think that when a human soul recognizes its How creator... Is this, what is this human soul? Can you explain it? Well, it's very difficult because the soul is a mystery. All religions have taught that the soul is a mystery. We can't understand it. I think that the soul is our reality. It's the real, it's the real essence of who each one of us is. It's not our body, it's our soul. And the reality of that manifests itself by spiritual qualities, I think, what about of, which might be love or justice mm. or your honesty or your integrity or your trustworthiness, you know, or whatever. You know, those are your qualities mm. which are the manifestations mm -hmm. of your spiritual reality. Which is what, is, what, 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 what are you doing? I mean, you talk about God, but I mean, yeah. you talk mainly about this sort of very ethereal right. substance which is up here. Is but beyond. who is God? Yeah. Um, I mean, okay. I mean, not, right. this, this, yeah. I'm going to answer that question. Actually, it's a very good question. I think it might deal with some other questions. But first of all, I once had a friend who came to my room in college and she said, you know, Adam, I believe everything in the Baha'i Faith. It all makes such sense. But I don't believe in God. She said, and don't get me wrong, I do believe in a life force. I believe that there is a power in this universe greater than man. I believe there is a, a reality, a, a something. I don't know how to describe it. That was about as close to God as I have ever heard. But she actually said, I don't believe in God. But I, don't get me wrong, I do believe in this life force, this power that sustains, so, animates so all your, the creation. your concept of so God then is really I think a God, force instead of a person. It's definitely not a person. But in it's order, we can't know God because God is infinite, is unknowable, all of the religions God are taught is, that. If God is unknowable, yeah. how, how, do possibly, we know how are you going to Excellent. possibly bring about this, this, this right. utopia of world peace which you talk about okay. in your literature state? First of all, the only, in order for God to be known, okay, we know that throughout history, every thousand years or so, there have been messengers from God, prophets, messengers, manifestations of God, however you want, I'm not interested in the world. Can, can I just okay. say something, if, yeah. if God is unknowable, how do these prophets get in touch with God? Right. Through um, a beautiful, amazing, we can't really understand the process of God speaking through his messenger, through his prophet, through his mouthpiece, which might be Jesus, which might before that have been Moses, which might before that have been Buddha or Krishna. Really? All of you're these not contradicting yourself here when you're saying God is unknowable and yet we have these wonderful prophets yes, down through yes, the ages. How do you know who's a prophet and who isn't a prophet in that I, case? I'm just going to finish here. As a grace, as a gift to humanity, we have had these divine educators who have come 
to give us the religions of the world. No, Can I ask you about, I mean, Baha'u'llah, I mean, where did he actually get his scripts from? I mean, his, his whole notion, his, I mean, where did he actually originate from, all the scriptures? Because it says it, it, it's a circle, doesn't it? A circle of life leads in Krishna, Muhammad. I mean, did he use the scriptures from those religions? Baha'u'llah was brought up in Iran, at that time it was called Persia, okay, yeah. in the 19th century. He was imprisoned for his teachings because they were seen to be very radical. Baha'u'llah in the middle well, of the 19th I mean, century. What radical? What was radical Equality about? Equality of men and women in, in, in Iran in the 19th century. Try that for radical. Yeah. Okay? The unity of religion, that all religions come from the same God, that is radical. So that makes okay. him a prophet being the radical? Unity. Right. No. But I mean, well, every, I mean, every prophet, prophet still has that one. Okay. Okay. It seems to me he just wrote a few what. really nice letters to a few world premiers, you know, I mean, proclaimed himself a prophet and seems to have got a following. When I was 16 years old, yeah. I got information on the Baha'i faith yeah. and I thought, what nice people. Yeah. Look at the way they live, that's good. Maybe I want to be a Baha'i. Mm -hmm. But then I realised that I liked the lifestyle, mm. but I didn't believe, I didn't know this man. The faith wasn't yeah. there, though I agree with the way that you may live. Yeah. Great. I think that really the challenge to all of us, to Baha'is or not, it doesn't matter, is that in the middle of the last century something happened. Baha'u'llah appeared on this planet, okay? Now, who is this man? Where do his question. teachings come yeah. from? We have to study that. Question. We have to study that. I mean, what I am doing is going home and becoming part of a grand swell of young people in this country and on this continent coming together and studying this man. Studying who they are. What do you have to say about he was a prophet? What is that about them and made him a prophet? Look at the fruit and then tell me if the tree is good. Well, that's because if the fruits are good, good, and this is what Jesus Christ said. Well, we're not talking about the fruit. I'm sorry. I just can't relate to what you're saying. I'm sorry. The fruit that I'm referring to might be look at his life, look at his teachings. Look at the Baha'i community. How do you actually differentiate yourself from other religions? The Baha'i faith is an independent world religion because it has come from Baha'i. There are other religions, there's a world of other religions. Do you know, I think it's very difficult to see the Baha'i faith as a new religion because it's not that. Well, you said earlier that it is a new religion. religion. It's a no, very said, young new yeah. religion. It's a quote. world religion. Okay, it is a new chapter in this progressive revelation. The progressive one fold. Well, the difference between sure. the progressive chapter for you right. and the progressive chapter for other religions, and if we put it in a different way, perhaps you can answer. So that maybe a religion will come after that. Right. I'm just going to get one question at a time. I think Paul's question. Um, What's the difference between the Baha'i faith and the other religions? Right, yeah. Okay. I think that we have, because I described earlier, that like humanity, Baha'is believe that humanity has developed to the point where Baha'u'llah says we are now at that stage, which is like that stage of coming out of our turbulent adolescence, and we have at the point where we are able to reach our maturity. Now, by maturity, Baha'u'llah says the meaning of this, the sign of this, is that once, at last, mankind is going to recognize its unity. But when is it going to happen? When are we going to come of age? Look around in the world now. We are recognizing, slowly by slowly, that this Very is one slowly. world. We are all in it together, whether you like it or not. And the oneness of mankind, That's which you, a few hundred years ago would not have been case, understood, in that case, is now becoming a logic. And so many religions have said that. And this one model. Excuse me. Nobody has said that yes, before. Have. I think every, they have. Every religion says we're all we're equal. Every religion says yes. that. I mean, the you know, is different at all. If Jesus Christ had said that the earth well, I'm not is talking but about one, Jesus Christ as well. If Jesus Christ said that the earth is but one country and mankind is no. citizens. At that time, Australia was not discovered. At that time, America was not discovered. The concept of the world yeah. 2,000 years ago was very different mm -hmm. from the concept of the and, world and today. They and they propose to bring about this world peace. I mean, you used to talk about the unification of all religions. I mean, how are you going to bring it, up, bring okay. it about? I mean, to me, you seem to be wonderful on the ethereal, on the philosophical, on this wonderful ideology okay. of the utopias, but there's no practical sort of steps that you are taking well, that is going to achieve this. I mean, how I'm are you going, going to say one thing that I think, I hope, and there are many answers to that question, but look 
as the international Baha'i community. It may only be five million people, but from every background, every race, every class, every creed, in every country of the world, and united. After 140 in, years, united. there is one united. Baha'i faith. In this one model. Okay. This no, is a yeah. global there's community. One, yeah, there's one Christian faith. There's and there's 3,000 denominations of Christianity. And, there's one, and there's one Islamic faith. How many denominations of Islam are there killing each other? Don't tell me that. If you look at the standard of being a Baha'i, it yeah. takes guts to be a Baha'i. Okay. You've got to be prepared to do it. You've yeah. got to say, I'm not just going to sit around. I want to make something. Yeah. I want to become a better person. Yeah. That's what it's about. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So and that requires a decision uh -huh. to take your life and to align it, to bring it into parallel okay. with the will of God. Which yeah, but, yeah, yeah, no, right. that's what I mean, in practical terms, for people, yeah. I mean, there's this strict, this, this moral uh, highness, this moral code that you've talked mm -hmm. about. Yeah. How does that pay, affect people in their everyday lives? What can they do and what can't they do as a Baha'i? Yeah. Can they have yeah. an abortion? Yeah. Can they have sex outside marriage? You know, if just I can just say, because, yes. because oh, can look, say yes we are no. not, can we are not, the Baha'i faith is not, don't ever think that the Baha'i faith is just a whole bunch of rules and regulations. No. No, no I don't think anything though. No, can I just say that? You talked about, you talk about, you talk about, about regulation, yeah. and I'm trying yeah. to get from you exactly right. what that Please. means. Well, if I can just answer your question then, okay, it's quite difficult, there's lots of questions at once. In many regards, for instance, telling a lie, for Baha'is, that is as bad, I mean, it is really bad, but how I equate it even to murder, I mean, that is how awful, and backbiting, what we call gossip, mm -hmm. which was rampant oh, in our daily life. Baha'is are told we must not gossip. What do you mean by gossip? gossip? What, what do you mean by about other people behind their back. How do you define that? No, you know, it's part of life anyway. We yeah, don't go and talk about... What if there was a religion behind somebody? Why is that about pushing a religion? You know, I said oh, at the, the beginning. Oh, the worst things in the world are gossip. I'm sure. I'm sure that, that Baha'is feel that prejudice is extremely dangerous. So I'm very interested in your policy about um, uh, Baha'i people believe that it's okay for a black little baby or whatever to be looked after by um, white parents. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't. I don't really agree with that. I don't think. It's, I, I, don't, I really don't. I don't see. Why? Well, uh, can you tell me more about it? What, why, do, why do you think this? Why do you think it's okay? Baha'is believe, yeah. because Baha'u'llah has said that the earth is one country and mankind is citizens. Right. He says, regard you one another not as strangers, mm. but as the family of humanity, okay? But so for Baha'is, we don't... They, Colour is not, doesn't matter, we are actually our colour. Yeah, it should matter, matter, but it people. does, it does, and there's nothing you can do to get away from it. I mean, actually, I'm sorry when I say that, it does matter, because yeah. if there was no colour, okay, if we were all white, or if we were all black, mm -hmm. it would be like a garden in which all the flowers were white carnations, or all the flowers, actually all the differences make the beauty. But behind, the unity of the races, is so important, the oneness of mankind. I mean, if you forget everything else that I say to you tonight, yeah. please remember unity, because that's what the Baha'i faith is about. Everything comes secondary to that. The unity of mankind is the central teaching. We believe in it, we will give our lives for it, mm -hmm. okay? We believe that black and white must recognize each other as flowers in the same garden. Yes, and that's, that's why. Ideal. So you can convince me how this is going to come about. It's it not, it's not something. Okay. No, you still have that's not something you can apply right. to today's society. You couldn't apply think, that to um, England. I'm yeah. just going to ask Greg something okay, in response to what you said. The first black and white interracial marriage in the U.S. was a Baha'i marriage. Great. Okay. It was, no, it's a fruit. Come on, be fair. Oh, fine, yeah, okay. yeah, no problem. I have lived for 20 years in Africa. Okay. Yeah. I believe very much that when my parents went out to Kenya as Baha'i, okay, that they were demonstrating, as any, not just my parents, but any Baha'is from this country who go there, are demonstrating that we are committed to living together and working together to build this world. Yeah. Okay? It's not just talk. Are you a pacifist then? No! You're not, but you're for world peace and you're not a pacifist. Baha'is mm. are activists. Ah, if you buy, revolutionists. 
Yes, we are spiritual revolutionaries. Yes, Absolutely. Arms revolution. Ah, well, no. that's what no, you find. No, no, no. What you find? Actually, do you believe? Pacifists and activists is very important. I think that pacifists, if by pacifists you mean just sit back and let it all happen. No, I didn't mean okay. that. Well, you know what I mean. I'm sure you're an intelligent man. You don't know. No, yeah. so the you opposite actively... of pacifists, pacifists is activists, and we're activists. We are actively going out to build a new world. Okay. But in we our can also you take up a Would you take up arms for your feet? Would we take up arms for our faith? Yes. No. One of the laws of Baha'u'llah is that we renounce violence. We renounce can violence. Can I um, ask you a question? To what extreme? Sorry. Look at Iran. Look at the case in Iran and see the way the Baha'i community has responded to violence against it. You see how the Baha'i... Yes. What would you do? What would you do if what every has nation turned against you like that? If every nation decided to slaughter the Baha'is in their country and exterminate them? How would you defend yourself against that? Wouldn't How that? did the Baha'is defend themselves? Well, they ran away, it seems No, they me. didn't. Can I just say it? They responded by respect to that government, by obedience to that government, okay? The only thing, the only point at which we will not, we cannot do that is when we have to recant our faith, because at that point... But, I mean, but, what if, but that government didn't go as far as I'm saying. What if it was like a Hitlerian kind of... Uh, what happens to a Baha'i who recounts his faith? He recounts his faith. You're entitled to do that. In some of your literature I read, your, you want world peace. Yeah. And yet I was amazed to read that nuclear disarmament was seen as a superficial subject yeah, on the path is. to world peace. Ask anybody. Nuclear, nuclear weapons could destroy, destroy the yeah. whole planet. You know uh, you, do you know, that when is we look, singularly yeah. the most important thing to me. To you. And I respect that. Okay. Let me just say that if you look at the world today, most the, pre the present feeling, the present understanding, the present belief is, among the majority of people, is that wonderful to talk about world peace, wonderful to talk about unity, but it's this light at the end of a long tunnel. We've got so much problem to deal with first. Is that yeah. generally accepted? Would you agree with that? Yeah. Okay, I mean, stop me if I'm wrong. Can you stop being so vague? And can you just tell me no. one, one special thing that you've done that's really good? We have, we have this nuclear stop weapons coming to the total okay. set of what will Most people see that as one of the things that has to be removed, and then eventually we'll get to world peace. Baha'is believe that, in fact, for world <coughs> unity, uh -huh. Baha'is believe that, actually, if you look at all of these things, for the most part, they are not the illnesses. They are not the disease. The basic disease afflicting mankind today is disunity. Now, hang on, uh -huh. all of these problems are symptoms of that disease, and therefore if we establish unity, these will naturally, and we won't be able to believe how quickly they will become secondary. Yeah, you're talking about that? the Where? unification of all religions, aren't you? You mentioned how it in all you your pamphlets. Yeah. How are you going, as, as the Baha'i faith, how are you practically, now I want to be practical, yeah. not philosophical, yeah. practically, how are you going to unify all the religions and all the differences and all the tr struggles and all the, the different things? How are you practically going to do that? Unify all faiths. Just look at the Baha'i community. Oh, I'm going to practical steps. Basically, by building temples and living the first world, is it? You're going to take. Never mind the Baha'i community. I want to know the practical steps. I think the Baha'i community is not an idea. It's a practical, living reality. It is an example of what we believe in. Okay, in practical terms. So are you? So are you? Look at the Baha'i community, and you'll see people from Hindu, Buddhist. Christian, Jewish, Muslim backgrounds coming together for the first time. But I know there's a fact, okay, yeah. that a Baha'i, okay, cannot be a Christian and a Christian cannot be a Baha'i because you are asking a Christian to compromise the very essence of their faith right. by accepting that Baha'i Ullah is a prophet of God. And yeah, I'm sorry, actually, I'm as Christians, saying, I we cannot accept yeah. that. I'm sorry. I know you said you don't want to go into that. I'll just say one thing on it because I think it might help to give us an idea. At the time of Christ, the Jews said exactly this to Christ. They said, how can we be asked to compromise our faith, okay, and to accept a new thing, okay, and we cannot be both. And Christ said, I come not to abolish, but to fulfill, okay. What? And in the same way that Christ was the fulfillment of what the Jews had been waiting for, Christians today are waiting for, have been for several hundred years, waiting for the promised one that Christ spoke about. Okay. Are you telling right. me as a Christian that Baha'u'llah is the second coming of Jesus Christ? That's right. Yes. Great. And just so that that's the case and everything's hunky-dory, yes. and in the end there is a lot of world peace, you must talk of, I suppose then, eventually, 
a world uh, language, <laughs> what would the language be? <laughs> Chinese, do you think? Because Baha they're more Allah Chinese says, in this world than anything else. Baha'u'llah says that that decision, because we do believe that there should be an international auxiliary language, just at least so we can communicate with each other. Absolutely. And that's fairly common makes sense a lot of now. sense. Oh, okay. I'd agree. It was seen to be very radical only a few years ago, but okay, if we accept that, Baha'u'llah says that it is incumbent upon the rulers of the world, the governments of the world, to come together, okay, and this is a practical thing that Baha'is okay, believe in. And now you're talking to How are you going to one of the things that they must what? do is to choose this thing. It's what not for the Baha'is. You should vision. Vision. What would it be? It's not for me to define. Oh, you're a Baha'is. It is. I'm asking yeah. you. What would it be? It, Please. If you heard what I said, I did. If Baha'u'llah said that it will be, the choice of language will be the choice by election, by choice, well, from the government be, of the world. Let's be devil's it's advocate now, let's be devil's advocate yeah. now, because Would I'd like to know, because if I were to join the Baha'i religion, yeah. I'd like to know that eventually, if there was going to be world peace, which yeah. of course is what I'd want, and I think what we all want, really, yeah. what would the language be? You know, I'm not a prophet. I don't know what that language is. So you're not going to ask my question. So I don't know that question. I, don't know that. I just thought you might be able to give me some sort of hope. I'd love to be able to. It would be naive and arrogant of me to try and say that I knew, because I don't know. No behind those. Okay. You know, I, I talk about naive now. People have tried to establish yeah. Esperanto as a yeah. multinational language. A lot and of behind study Esperanto, okay. But it's not for us to decide whether it is Esperanto or English or Arabic or Chinese. Well, if it's for okay. this world parliament so, to decide, what else is this world parliament going to decide? What other powers yeah. will it have okay. as the thing from national government? Did you read the document, The Promise of World Peace? Because that has in it yeah. almost the, I, this sounds naive, but almost like an agenda for things that must be decided. Yeah. And what? One of those is the boundaries of national territories okay, must be agreed. I mean, that may sound silly to us here living on an island, but there are many parts of the world where that is a cause of great right. disunity. Northern Ireland, for example. I mean, what happens there? Whatever, okay. Whatever. 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 No, Whatever. I'm saying, saying you don't care. Sorry, I may have missed your question. Yeah, well, what, what I'm saying is, I mean, that, that this world parliament is just going to mm -hmm. meet and look at the world, the map of the world, and draw lines where it wants to. No. And that, that's, that's unity, is it? No. You know, to solve boundary problems. You know, one of the things that the Baha'is, if you look at the Baha'i administration and you look at how the Baha'is operate. This is not a top-down, authoritative imposition. This yeah, I'm is aware of this. from grassroots. Yeah, I'm aware that the, okay. you know, the parliament and votes on it. I mean, well, well, what I want to know is, mm -hmm. why should some guy from, or girl from China, or Russia, or Argentina, have a vote on what happens to the people of Northern Ireland? You know, why should that happen? Do, do why you know, should that happen? One of the things, uh, I don't think that what I'm saying is that they should have a vote in what happens in Northern Ireland. What I'm saying, as a Baha'i, my understanding is that the world is almost, the humanity, all the peoples of the world, the different colors and backgrounds, are almost like they are a single system. They are interconnected. No country in this world can separate itself from the other country. So I have right. national base. Okay. Yeah, but not not way. How do you Because see? we need to administer. Okay? For the sake of administration, we need smaller units and then smaller units and a process, okay, almost like a tree. You know, that has... Have you got a house? Have you got a house? How do you see heaven? How do I see heaven? Mm. I think heaven is that state of being that is close to God. Okay, that condition of doing what God wants us to do. To I'm not going to become a Baha'i, right? So what's going to happen to me? I'm not going to get into heaven then. Who do you think I am? I'm not here to judge you and to tell you yeah, where you're going. Yeah, you have, 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 have to have a God. That's for God. Do you have to have a religious faith? Your God is a Baha'i God. In order God. to go to heaven, do you have to believe in God? If I'm a good person, but I'm, I don't have a religious faith, will I still go yeah. to heaven? Do you know... Is my goodness accepted by the Baha'i? Goodness is not a question of labels and packaging. I okay. think if you were going to say... The fact that you stick a label Baha'i on you doesn't mean that you have a guarantee to heaven. My faith.